Hello all. So if you have a vehicle with EVAP codes, I thought I'd go over what the most common causes and fixes are for a vehicle with EVAP codes and how you go about troubleshooting what the problem is and hopefully fix it. And basically all the EVAP system does is take gas vapors from the gas tank and feed them back up to the engine to get burnt off. So the system's going to start back at the gas tank and then there's going to be some hoses going up to the engine compartment. And there's going to be several components involved in this. So I'm going to go over the basics of this and what to do when you do get an EVAP code. So I'll be right back. And so the first thing that could cause this and probably the most common thing is going to be a bad gas cap. That gas cap needs to seal up correctly. It is a part of the EVAP system. If it doesn't seal up correctly, then it's going to cause an EVAP leak. And this is going to include the newer vehicles that have the no gas cap system with the flap that automatically opens. But that also needs to seal up correctly. And so basically go examine your gas cap. Go examine this seal that goes around the back right here and be sure it doesn't look like it's damaged or anything like this and that it's sealing up correctly. A lot of people automatically go buy a new gas cap, which if you do go buy a new gas cap, try to get an OEM gas cap for your vehicle. Since sometimes those third party aftermarket gas caps, they don't seal up correctly and they cause problems. So if you do get a new gas cap, try to get an OEM gas cap. The next thing to check is gonna be this filler neck right here. Be sure to examine it. Be sure it doesn't look like it's damaged or anything like this. It's because if this gets damaged in here, it's not gonna seal up either. And quite often what happens with these is that the gas nozzle keeps going in and out. And after some time, sometimes these can get damaged and they don't seal up correctly. So be sure to examine this and be sure it's good. One thing you can do when you have a gas cap like this is that if you get a plastic bag, put a hole in it and just put it around the gas cap and then tighten it up so that it'll seal. Go clear the code and then check to see if the code comes back. It might take a few days to see if that code comes back. Most of these vehicles do the test when the vehicle's off and after it's cooled down. So usually at night, at like 2 o'clock in the morning, the computer will kick on and do these tests. But I'll show you real quick with this plastic bag how you can go about checking to see if you got a bad gas cap or a bad filler neck. So basically you punch a hole inside of the bag, try to double it up like three or four times just to make a temporary kind of seal kind of gasket to just to see if it will seal up. And then once it's sealed up good, go clear the code and see if the code comes back. Like I said, it might take it a day or two for the system to do a test. So if you do do it this way, be sure this is sealed up good. Go clear that code. And if the code doesn't come back in like two, three, four days, then you know this is the problem. But the first thing that could cause this is a bad gas cap or filler neck. And so if you know the gas cap is good, that filler neck is good, the next most common thing that goes wrong inside of EVAP system is going to be the purge valve. And the purge valve is going to be located up inside the engine compartment somewhere. It's going to vary a bit depending on the vehicle, the year, the make, things like this. But it'll be located up inside the engine compartment somewhere. On this vehicle right here, this is the purge valve right here. And basically what's going on with this is that right here on this hose, this hose is going down to what's called a charcoal canister, which is connected to the gas tank. So this hose is coming up from underneath the car and gas vapors are coming in on it. They're coming up to this purge valve right here, which is just the valve that just opens and closes when the computer tells it to. When the computer opens this valve, the gas vapors are gonna come in and they're gonna come in on this hose right here. They're gonna come down and they're gonna get fed into the intake right here where they're gonna go into the cylinders and get burnt off. And so that's basically it. So there's a few different ways you go about testing the purge valve. What happens with these purge valves is either they get stuck open or they get stuck shut. When they get stuck open, gas vapors just keep flowing into the intake and that can cause like rich codes or the engine to take a long time to start and different things like this. It's gonna vary depending on the vehicle and the engine. And when it gets stuck closed, it's just not going to work. When the computer sends a signal to it to open, it's not going to open. And so the gas vapors will never go in to get burnt off. And so basically you just want to test to see if it's opening and shutting. It's because that's all it does. And so like I said, there's some different ways to do this. One way to do it is that when the engine's cold and it hasn't been running for a little while, this purge valve should be closed. And then after you start the vehicle and you start driving around, like 5, 10, 15 minutes later, the computer's going to send it a signal to open so that the gas vapors can go in and get burnt off. So what you can do is you can take off the hose going down to the charcoal canister. You can take this hose off. Then you start up the vehicle when the engine's cold. It hasn't been running in a little while. And there should be no vacuum right here. So basically you put your finger right here and you check to see if there's a vacuum right here. It'll be the intake vacuum, the natural vacuum of the engine. So it won't be much, but it'll be a slight vacuum. It'll be a slight pull on your finger. If there is a vacuum here within the first five minutes when you first start up the engine and the engine was cold, it hasn't been running in a while, then this valve is stuck open. And then what you do is you let the vehicle run for a little while, like 5, 10, 15 minutes, and at some point the computer is going to send this purge valve a signal, and then at that point you should be able to fill a vacuum. And that's a real basic test just to see if that purge valve is working or not, if it's opening or shutting.
If you do fill a vacuum within the first four or five minutes, you're not sure if that computer sent in a signal to open or not, you can remove the plug going to it. That way the computer won't be able to send it no signal. And this valve is usually normally closed. So in its natural state, it's gonna be closed until the computer sends it a signal. So if you remove this, you should never fill no vacuum right here. So like I said, there's some different ways to go about testing this. This engine is cold, it hasn't been running a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go start it up. I'm gonna check to see if there's any vacuum here. If there is a vacuum here, then I know that valve's open. If there is no vacuum, then I know it's closed, then I'm gonna wait 10, 15 minutes until the computer sends it a signal to open. And then at that point, if it opens, then I know it's good. So that's basically it. I'm gonna go and do that and I'll be right back. Okay, so the engine's running right now. So I'm gonna go and fill. And I don't feel anything on here. There's no vacuum. There's no pull on my finger at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave this engine running for another five, 10, 15 minutes. And basically at some point, the computer should send this purge valve a signal to open. And then at that point, you should feel a vacuum on your finger. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I've been letting the engine run for five minutes and I can hear it. I don't know if you can hear it. It's a little thumping noise. That's very common with these. And if I put my finger down here, I can feel it. It's pulling on my finger. And so I know that purge valve is good. I know it was closed when the vehicle started up and now it's open. Like I said, that's all these purge valves do is they just open and close when the computer commands it to. There's some more tests that you can do if you want to, but this one's good, so I'm gonna move on to the next component. So those things all check out good. You know, the gas cap is good. The filler neck is good. The purge valve is working correctly. There's no issues there. The next thing to go and check is gonna be the charcoal canister. And the charcoal canister is gonna be located up underneath the vehicle by the gas tank somewhere. And it's gonna have hoses going to it. One hose is gonna be coming from the gas tank. So the gas vapor is going to the charcoal canister. And then another hose is gonna be going up to the purge valve. These charcoal canisters are kind of like storage for the gas vapors. There's little pellets of charcoal inside of here and the gas vapors have to flow around and through them before they go out the other side and up to the purge valve. If these go bad, sometimes they could get cracks in them, things like that, then that's gonna cause problems. One of the main components on these charcoal canisters is gonna be what's called a vent valve. This can't be named differently, like on this right here, this is called a leak detection pump, but it has the vent valve built into this leak detection pump. But a lot of vehicles like the purge valve are gonna have a vent valve down here at the charcoal canister or located right next to it somewhere. Sometimes they can be separate, sometimes they're built in together. It's really gonna vary. But a vent valve is kind of like that purge valve, except that's normally open instead of normally closed. When you go to fill up your gas tank, all those gas vapors are gonna get pushed out towards this charcoal canister and that can overload this charcoal canister. So that vent valve that's normally open lets all those gas vapors go through the charcoal pellets up around and get pushed out the vent valve. It's quite often what happens with the vent valve when they go bad is they get stuck shut or they get clogged up. And when you go to fill up your vehicle, the nozzle will keep clicking off. You won't be able to fill up your gas tank quickly. That's a very common problem with the bad vent valve. There is different types of designs for this and different things going on and how they designed them and, and engineered them. You will need to get a diagram or schematic for your particular vehicle EVAP system to know for sure what's going on with it. But the next thing to go and check is going to be this charcoal canister and if possible that vent valve which like i said can be built into it can be separate or like this what they call a leak detection pump it could be built into it and different things like this so you can go check out your charcoal canister and check and be sure that all your hoses are hooked up good nothing's come up and underneath the vehicle and knocked anything off electrical connections are all connected good and things like that that's kind of basic you can also check to see if you got any cracks. Sometimes debris can come up underneath there, especially on the ones that are not shielded and they could hit it and crack it and different things like this. Be sure all your wires are all connected good. There's no problems going on there. That would be some real basic things to come through and check with the charcoal canister. But the next thing to go and check that could have fell is gonna be the charcoal canister and the vent valve. Like I said, if you are having difficulty filling up your gas tank, if the nozzle keeps clicking off, then that's a classical sign of a bad vent valve that's stuck shut. You can test that vent valve the same way you could test that purge valve, except that it's normally open instead of normally closed. So when the computer's testing the system, it's gonna send that vent valve a signal to close, and then it's gonna test and be sure that everything's sealed up, and then it's gonna send it a signal to open. If it is separate and it's up on the frame or something, that makes it easy to test. But like these, when they're built into it, that makes it much more difficult. And usually when they're built into the charcoal canister, people just replace the whole charcoal canister. Although if you really want to get into it, you can open them up and try to locate that vent valve, run some tests on it, and maybe even get that one part that you need to replace inside that charcoal canister. 
but the next thing to go and check is going to be this charcoal canister. And so if you've gone through and you checked all those components and all those components look good, you don't see no issues going on there. The next thing that's going to cause this is going to be that there's a leak somewhere inside of the EVAP system. And what this usually means is going to be that one of these hoses is leaking somewhere or one of the connections where they connect or possibly one of the components like the charcoal canister is leaking somewhere or something like that. And so you can't go through, you can't examine all your hoses going around everywhere, see if you can see anything physically damaged or disconnected or anything. But it can be difficult to find a leak inside of the EVAP system. And so for this reason, most mechanics, when they think there's a leak inside the EVAP system, they're going to use what they call a smoke machine. Basically, basically these are just little things that create smoke. And you use a compressor, and it'll blow smoke out. And where the smoke comes out, you put this on one of the hoses, and you feed smoke into the EVAP system. And then wherever the smoke comes out, you know you found the leak, and you're able to fix it. So for example, right here, if you took this off, you had the smoke coming out, you'd feed smoke into it. It would go into the EVAP system, and then you'd go look at all your hoses everywhere, underneath the vehicle, down around the charcoal canister, different things like this. And you look to see if you see any spots where smoke is coming out, because if it is coming out, then you know you found a leak and you need to fix it. One thing about this test is be aware that that vent valve located on the charcoal canister, that vent valve is normally open. So you will need to be aware of that. So you will need to command that vent valve to close using a good OBD2 scan tool. If you have a good OBD2 scan tool, quite often they have an option inside there where you can command that vent valve to close. That way the smoke doesn't go out it. When the smoke starts to come out that vent valve, you can also try to block the port and just be aware that that's normal, that there should be smoke coming out where that vent valve is at. But basically be aware that if you do do a smoke test, that that vent valve is normally open and smoke will come out of it. If you do think you have a leak and you want to do one of these smoke tests, I'll put a link down below to one of these smoke machines. You can also make these up yourself. There's a lot of YouTube videos and things like that on how you go about making these up. But basically the next thing to do is go around and check all these hoses and all these connections and everything else and test to see if there's any kind of leak inside of it. And the best way to do that is with a smoke machine. And the last thing on the list is going to be what they call a fuel tank pressure sensor or EVAP pressure sensor. And basically there's a sensor somewhere inside of the system that's reporting back to the computer what the pressure is. And this is how the computer knows that if there's a leak or what's going on inside of the system. And if that sensor goes bad, there might not be no problem inside of the system, but the computer thinks there is since that sensor is reporting bad information back to it. This sensor can be located differently. Sometimes it's located right on top of the gas tank. Sometimes it's located on the fuel pump. And sometimes it's located on the charcoal canister. So you will need to get a diagram to know where everything's located on your system. But basically, if you go through and you check everything else out, don't forget that these have what's called a fuel tank pressure sensor or EVAP pressure sensor. And that's reporting back to the computer what's going on inside the system. And if this goes bad, there might not be no problem in the system, but the computer just thinks there is. So the last thing on the list is going to be a bad fuel tank pressure sensor. And so that's basically it. I just wanted to give a basic overview of what to do if you have an EVAP code or EVAP codes, what's going on inside the EVAP system and all the main components, along with how you go about checking them and testing them and see if there's any kind of issues with them. If you have anything to add, please comment down below. If you have any questions, ask me and I'll try to answer them. If this video helps you. Please click like, please click subscribe and have a good day.